Good afternoon, everyone. Today, uh, I'm my great pleasure to come introduce to you how to use deep learning to build interactive actors for VR and AR. My name is Kevin He. I started uh, my gaming career as an engine developer in Blizzard Entertainment, and we shipped a few games, including World of Warcraft expansion, and our tech was used in StarCraft and other franchises at Blizzard. So after, um, after Blizzard, I came back to the Valley and served as the technical director for physics platform at Roblox. We developed a distributed physics system to support millions of kids to play online to interact with the digital world. So after uh, that uh, responsibility, uh, I took a uh, a uh, technical role at Disney Mobile Team. We shipped a game called Star Wars Commander based on Star Wars IP. And uh, that's the last company before I started Demotion. And Demotion, we focus on building the interactive motion technology that can bring forward deeply interactive motion and a simulated character in the digital space. So first, I want to touch base on this question. What is interactive motion? We are comparing with the traditional prescribed motion here. When we talk about prescribed motion, we are referring to keyframe animation or motion capture based uh, animation technologies. So uh, the, this is our the classic technique. The result produced by prescribed motion are usually linear, static, and uh, they are repetitive by definition. So although you can create diversity using rule-based uh, trigger for animations, but they are limited. So as we are moving forward, um, we, we are looking into use physics simulation to create animation. So the advantage of that is you can create these unique uh, content moments that are hardly re repeated. Every time you experience it, it's different. It also allows you the ability to create interaction uh, for your content. For example, now your character sitting in the game world will not be like a statue, not moving. You can interact in any way you want, and we simulate the physical reaction effect in response to your input. So that level of uh, deep interaction is what we can bring out to our content producers. And uh, then I want to review the technical milestones we went through to achieve this interactive motion. Step one, we started building a very robust drawing physics engine, as shown by this uh, demo video. Uh, this created by our uh, offer users, Xamarin Software. It's basically, we created an articulate physics simulation engine that will do joint very uh, efficiently and accurately. As we can see, when our articulated uh, uh, structure is moving in the digital world, you want the level of uh, strength and accurate to mimic the real world, like a robotic move, move around. With that solid biomechanical uh, simulation as a foundation, we are able to move to the next stage. In the second stage, we apply the physical system to a digital actors and produce a common known as ragdoll effect. We will have basic collisions and interaction between the character and the ground. But as you can see, it's a pretty passive. And uh, there's some simulation, but not so much intelligence there. To have our character really have life, right? we need to uh, simulate uh, the muscle model on top of the skeletal biomechanical structure. So our muscle model is a very simplified one. We just consider at every joint of your uh, digital char character, there is an effective torque being applied to simulate the muscle effect. So with that uh, simplified muscle model applied to the skeletal physics, we get Look at this. So the difference <laughs> is this guy can, can tighten his virtual muscle and to hold his posture, right? 
it's not like a dancing rock doll anymore, but still, uh, it, still not intelligent enough. It still will just fall off on the ground when you run the simulation. So gravity wins in the end. And then step three, we started to study the control theory. Uh, honestly, we learned a lot from robotic community for the early stage of our project. So if we study the problem balancing, we can easily recognize the center of mass of human being is very up, you know, uh, it's very uh, up in the torso. And when we project the center of mass to the ground plane, we can see at the projection uh, falling into a red square we call supporting polygon. That's your supporting plane offered by your feet. If the projection of center of mass go out of the red box here, which is the supporting polygon, the gravity will generate a torque to, pu pu to pull you down. So this is um, simple physics and Newton law in play. So in order to uh, build a basic balancing controller, we basically need to tighten the virtual muscle throughout our skeletal structure in a way that it will induce ground reaction force, as shown by the green arrows. Right? If we can tighten the muscle in the right way to trigger the ground reaction force to push you back to a balancing position, then we can maintain standing steel balance. For, for, so uh, this basically tells us to make a, a standing balancing character, all we need is to write an algorithm to uh, dynamically pull the muscles, the virtual muscles, throughout your skeleton to induce such ground support force that will put you back in the balancing position. With that implemented, we now have a more agile character that can stand in place and maintain balance. As you can see, the guy can shift his weight from left to right, can squatting down, and he can also you know, do some daily exercise standing in the same place. So uh, we, we got him balanced. So it, it's more complicated than it looked, but fundamentally, we just implement that ground reaction force controller to uh, to achieve balance through internal torque generation. Then our step four, the natural next step, is how to get this aut aut autonomous balance character to walk around. The basic thinking is if we have a stand standing still balancing, we just uh, keep balance and lift one foot at a time slowly and just alternate that process then hopefully that will generate a walking sequence with balance. It kind of works until you push him with external disturbance. Then it's not stable. It's still falling down. So we think, OK, uh, time to go back to textbook, study more control theory to make this guy to balance while walking. Then we look at more uh, control theory uh, done by robotics and control industries. Uh, we, we understand, OK, to have a steady walking balancer, what we need, we also need to compute a, a foot planning strategy that will do the feet shuffling while you are disturbed in the right direction. This way, you can recover from an uh, imbalanced state. Uh, we'll also, um, we also implement this uh, so-called feedback policy. So the feedback policy basically takes control error as input, it generates a compensated torque throughout your body again to compensate for any external disturbance. With, food strat with this food strat strategy implemented, with this new feedback policy, we get to achieve a working balancer that can walk around and keep balance. So um, it, it took us about a year to achieve this state. So we have a self-balancing character to walk around in digital world. And then we started to build a few applications in VR. We find uh, quite interesting. Uh, we'd like to share with all of you. The first application in VR is, can we achieve full body tracking using physics simulation, right? And you know, a common dilemma in the, in the VR world is your hardware can only give you the tracking information for a few number of bones. The standard configuration, you have a he your head bone and two hands bone. Uh, they are tracked by sensors and VR hardware. So your software 
will know the position and the sometime orientation of the, the three control points. But from the information of three bones, how can you derive full body animation? So that's a, a challenge. <laughs> In this demo, we run our physical balancer on this schoolboy. Even with just one bone under control in this case, I'm dragging his head. The, the 30 bones throughout the body just follow along. And they're just trying to keep the guy balanced. So with only one control point, one tracker, you can achieve a very rich interaction. So the guy can, can sit down, can do. In this case, we switch the tracker to the foot. Again, with just one bone uh, on the foot that is tracked, the character can generate a sort of you know, full body motion. It's better than you know, a, a, man, a manual figure uh, without life. It's, it's more lively. So that's the um, application we, we are very interested in. We think, uh, we call this a three-point tracking technology, but really it can apply to uh, one point, two point, six point tracker. It doesn't matter. The core of the problem, the core of the solution is um, using physics simulation to track full body motion with just the input of a partial number of bones. So we applied this to uh, a few of our prototype. This is the, the, bottom, the bottom video shows one of our prototype, right? Uh, compared to the traditional solution to three-point tracking, which is IK-based, our approach offers more naturalness. Like the upper video using uh, classic IK-based solution for three-point tracking, the difficulty for IK is you have to tune the animation weights all, all, all the way along your skeleton to make it work. It's very hard to tune that. And often you have this uh, weird wrist rotation problem or elbow flipping problem, as shown in the video on the top. But what if we apply our physics system to do the three-point tracking problem? The, the, the basic thinking is that you know, we can leverage Newton law as the prior knowledge to fill in the gap between the partial tracking input and the full body motion. So whatever missing from the input, the physics simulation will fill in the gap. And then the result is as shown in the bottom video. We basically can, uh, th with the same three-point tracking input, right, we can generate a uh, more lively full body motion. And that can not only move around the world in a more natural uh, fashion, it also is also interactive. And that's very interesting. The next, the next we're thinking, how can we extend this to multiplayer? We just run two physics simulators on two computers for the two avatars. And the two, the two engineers here, they are not touching each other physically in the physical world. But in the virtual world, they, they are touching each other's head. They are doing this martial arts combat. They are you know, <clears throat> dancing or doing whatever interaction. So uh, we, we provide this sort of virtual touch uh, effect. So each, uh, each player in this setting, they will feel their avatar can, can, can touch, can reach out his hands and touch the other friend, do a handshake, high five, even do a martial arts combo. You see the coll collision, you see the reactive effect. And that's the kind of deep interaction we are really intrigued for. We, we think you know, we, we should bring this out uh, for more content producers to try this technology. And this uh, from an early prototype game called the FIS called the Fist of Physics. We made this uh, three years ago, so it's uh, a little bit uh, a course. <laughs> but really want to show how, what if we, we place uh, this technology in a combat game? What if we let a girl to punch a giant robot in, in whatever way he wants to punch? There's no game rule, right? It's VR. Just punch it in, in any fashion or dodge him in any fashion. But what we can guarantee is every punch generate a unique reaction. So every time you play the game, it's never the same because how the robot reacts is just based on uh, the velocity, the impulse, uh, the inertia of your fist, and the, the direction you come to it. It generates a, a simulated effect. So that's what we prototype for applying this tag 
in a combat, in a combat a fighting game scenario. The next, we are thinking, OK, let's prototype this with, a pet, with petting or more social game context. Uh, again, this is a very old demo we created three years ago. At that time, we actually were using Oculus DK2, the prototype gear. And we also, um, inter we also used the Leap Motion hand tracker hardware together with the, the headset. So we want to prototype a virtual patting experience. <laughs> so sorry about the, the little bit br uh, br brutal, brutal uh, interaction. But uh, um, the, the dog really just trying to stand up. Sorry. <laughs> He's just trying to stand up. There's only one key, key pose he's trying to maintain standing there. But the seemingly infinite interaction is offered by physical simulation. So every time the player you know, hold his feet or tuck his air or push him, the, 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 the balancing algorithm I talked in the previous slides, the kick in action, they will try to uh, teach the, instruct the dog to keep balance on your feet. And that automatically generates a, lo a lot of interaction effect. And this is still uh, very coarse, but this shows us some, some light into the direction. Maybe we can expand this technology further to provide a truly uh, indistinguishable interactive experience with you know, VR subject, with VR, VR characters. So uh, similarly, the same, same technique can be applied in AR. And here we are showing a, a prototype of just the same schoolboy right, you saw in the VR space. Uh, we, we, here we use an uh, Android phone and project the schoolboy on a kitchen. And he's standing there. Then I'm dragging his hand using my finger touch on the, on the phone screen. Then the boy will sort of interact with the touch you know, just like, hopefully, <laughs> in real life one day. So uh, this shows the same interaction technology is also applicable in AR content. So um, yeah, that's the common needs we need to solve, uh, which is to bring deep interaction to AR and the VR content. <laughs> so in, in the former talk section, we summarized our phase one achievement which is to create a self-balanced uh, uh, walking characters in virtual space. And we'll also talk about a few applications in VR. So we saw the promise uh, of this technology. But to bring this to the next stage, we are really think, thinking, how can we improve the quality of this physics-based animation to the next level? How can we go towards indistinguishable quality level with, for, with the real human in real world? And that's what we call the motion intelligence. So from interactive motion, we are, uh, we are applying more machine learning technique to bring the quality level to the motion intelligence. And what does motion intelligence mean? Here is a quote from DeepMind. The agility and the flexibility of monkeys swing from tree to tree and a football player dodging the oppo uh, opponents while scoring a goal. So this kind of sophisticated motor control is the hallmark of, of physical intelligence and is a crucial part of AI research. So um, this quote summarizes the motion intelligence pretty well. It's also a very exciting stage we want to achieve in order to bring the next level of motor intelligence to our interactive characters. So uh, the second phase of the company, we started to build uh, motion intelligence based on our uh, previous experience to build a biomechanical character uh, that can do self-balancing and walking, right? So how do we do that? <clears throat> the inspiration came from uh, watching a young baby learn to walk. Um, the, the little guy needs to coordinate 200 muscles throughout his body. And uh, his cerebrum will issue control commands to tighten and loosen every single muscle of it. And uh, with that, he will practice for hundreds of times. He will fall, he will climb up, he will learn from adults walking around. And that uh, process is something inspire us to build a digital equivalent. 
so that we can achieve uh, motion intelligence that has higher quality than our stage one tech, uh, technique. <coughs> so we are building a reinforced learning framework. The input, <coughs> the input to our reinforced learning is just a, a real human's motion clip. Just like the young baby will, will look at how adults move around him. <coughs> and then we'll run our physical simulation framework. <coughs> we'll train the digital actor to mimic uh, what the input motion are, is doing. And then we'll simulate the interaction between this uh, digital agent and the digital environment and the, we'll simulate the gravity, friction, everything, then apparently the digital agent will fail many times, just like the young baby will fail ma many times learning to walk. And after thousands of uh, experiments, we collect the reward and the penalty and feedback for each training iteration. If the, if, if the guy can walk stably with imbalance, we return a reward to the training algorithm. If the guy falls down, we'll return a penalty to the training algorithm. After repeating these thousands of times, the result, <laughs> the result will be a control neural network. We call it a, a control policy that can, can do what the input uh, motion uh, want to do and also maintain balance, everything. So next, I want to show the example how this works. So, so the input here is the, this is the reference motion. It's just a, a two, two seconds of a real human uh, running and uh, it's captured using a motion capture device. This shows, this shows uh, the training result after a few iterations. As you, as you can see, the digital character can, can run but it's not very stable because um, he needs more feedback and the improvement to make the running uh, smoother. Yeah, excuse me. Then in the <coughs> then in the next step. We repeat the experiment for thousands of times. Eventually, we can see a very smooth running digital agent uh, is being trained. <coughs> so not only the character can running around, you can also interact with him, you know, uh, applying external force or dragging him he will be continuously interactive during the simulation uh, phase. So this uh, gives us the confidence, right? We can pretty much learn every uh, standard human motor skill by doing this reinforced learning practice. The next step, we want to, <coughs> we want to combine multiple behaviors into a motion brain. So uh, in this case, we have three input behavior, running, sharp turn, and push up from a folding. We repeat the previous process. We trained a digital controller that can mimic each of the three input behaviors. Then we run another path of training to train a motion brain, a higher level control policy that can transition between these three skills to, um, to provide a more complete digital actor that can, can do all these three uh, these three motor, motor skills. Uh, this process, just like uh, young, when the young baby learned motor skill, she will just learn crawling in the first, and then she learn climb up and stand. Uh, the, more, uh, the more she learns, the more sophisticated task she can complete. And naturally, in our digital uh, implementation of that, we use the second stage of training to build a higher level uh, meta controller that can, that can combine these several input behavior into a more sophisticated uh, motion brain. That is what we call. And here is the result. So we combine three uh, single motor skill: running, sharp turning, and uh, get up 
from falling. So with the three skill, the actor is more real, right? Because now he, he mastered his three motor skill, and it's an AI algorithm to control how to transition between them in order to recover from falling, in order to remain balanced, in order to provide that kind of uh, interactivity you expect from a digital actor in VR. So uh, here is just a more advanced example. Instead of three, three behavior, we trained eight behaviors for this guy. We have a nickname. We call him uh, Eight Pack Man. <laughs> so, so this guy basically know how to, how to go forward, backward, turn left, turn right, and can respond to high level uh, instruction. And it remains full, fully interactive in the whole process. So. Um, <laughs> You, you may ask, what's the difference between this character and the standard animation controller we saw in game, right? We do locomotion all the time. So the difference really, this is not done through keyframe animation. This is not like a blending from a few keyframes. This is simulated, generated from eight input behavior. The transitions are trained. The dynamic blending uh, is happening at the control torque level. It's basically, uh, Im imagine, uh, the baby learned the muscle memory to perform eight motor skills. So if you want to blend two behavior to have a more uh, in, uh, uh, smooth intermediate state, uh, you will not blend at the output of the animation. You will blend at the, the muscle torque level. So you will tighten your muscle you know, uh, to a middle stage in order to blend two physics-based controller to produce an intermediate action, which is shown in this guy. We call it parameterization of the controller. And that's what we can do to produce uh, infinite in, in, uh, intermediate actions as well. So in the following slides, uh, we just want to show more result from the output of our pipeline applying this reinforced learning framework. And what the first benefit of this simulated character, it shows some emerging behavior such as this blue robot, you know, even though the, even though the input doesn't have the recovery uh, reference, the input is just two seconds of running, but the trend result can recover from tripping when he stumbles over some digital obstacles. Also, the trained robot can, can be adaptive to environment. In this case, the input is just a wireframe character you see on, uh, at the right corner. But once we train it into a digital actor, this guy can adapt to an earthquake board. He can try to maintain balance as much as he could. So um, going forward, we, we also train more. Like uh, the input is just walking in place, and the output character can balance on a ball. Uh, that's even a t challenging technique for real human to do. And uh, the last scenario we are showing here is a big crowd of virtual characters, right? So each character has just three skills, just running straight, um, kick up, kick up, and push up. But with the three reference motion, with three behavior, the interaction between the characters are more than 30 possibilities, 300 possibilities. It shows a great diversity in the result, which we need in VR and AR applications. That will give you the immersion we are looking for, for virtual characters. So the last one, we are putting everything together so to show a parkour AI uh, being trained. So in this guy, altogether, there are seven reference motions, seven mocap clips, as you, sh as you see from the wireframe, uh, the wireframe uh, clips at, at the up corner. But our machine learning framework can train each individual of these seven parkour skills and also train the motor brain, the motion brain, to combine the seven skills to have an integrated, uh, multi-skilled virtual character. And this guy can you know, jump over obstacle, can step up, step down, can adapt, adapt his um, running speed according to the, the vision of what's upcoming. So this uh, demo demonstrates that 
you know, by combi combining more and more skills, we can train a very skillful digital actor that can even do parkour. Of course, if he runs into unexpected environment like the ice, he will still fail. So uh, that's because we haven't trained him, we haven't taught him how to balance an uh, icy field. So like in real life, if a guy never skated before, he will fall down on the, on the ice. But we, we pull him on the dry ground, he, he's okay. <laughs> and the next, I want to show that uh, w the technology can also apply to non-human characters, such as a dog. For this demo, the training input is 10 seconds of motion capture data of a dog. And from these 10 seconds of input, we are able to reconstruct the digital dog with three behaviors, which is trotting, turning, and sitting. And this, uh, this big rendered dog is fully simulated. So while he is doing all these actions, you can interact with him in any way you want. This is a better version of the earlier dog demo I showed in the, in the you know, VR, VR prototype. As you can see, there are more na it's more natural than the last demo I showed. Uh, thanks for the power of machine learning. OK, uh, in the last, last stage, which, which reflects our latest R&D uh, technique, we want to demonstrate some more advanced motion intelligence. In, in, a, uh, in a research paper we published in the last C-graph this August, we, sh we demonstrate how this technique can be used to generate a basketball player that can run, keep balance, and the dribbling at the same time. The challenge of this simulation is that the, the, the body is very dynamic, so it's very hard to keep balance while running. Second, the ball is uh, moving around very fast, and the contact time between the ball and the hands is very short, which means if you, uh, you miss the finger, finger, uh, finger movement or the control a little bit, the ball will fall off. So how do we solve all these control problems in just one digital character? The goal is to Basically, the input is just a few motion clips of how real basketball players move around. The output, we want to train a basketball controller that can do all, everything I said before, running and dribbling and balancing. So it fundamentally, it's the same technique. We first train individual dribbling skill or ball man, manip, manipulation skill like this. Uh, and then we'll train multiple individual skills like uh, so each of, each of these are just trained from one reference motion, but it will do, it, do that in a physical way. And then we train a control graph. The control graph will transition between these multiple skills to fulfill some high-level goal. And this is the result. Uh, the left video shows um, a meta controller that combine, combine three in-place dribbling skills. It's uh, um, the front passing, the back passing, and the crossover. So the digital agent can seamlessly combine the three dribbling in place to respond to high-level command, like a move forward or backward. The same thing uh, happens for the right video. In the right video, we combine the three running dribbling skill. Basically, you can go straight forward, you can do a turn, you can do a, a more, more fancy uh, crossover, things like that. But the trained AI can combine the three individual skills into one multi-skilled basketball uh, player. And that, uh, that virtual player can respond to high-level command, such as moving to a direction, as indicated by the yellow arrow. So this demonstrates the sophistication we can achieve by applying machine learning to uh, a physical simulated character. And such character, if you bring it to VR space, you can use it to build a, a trainer for basketball play, uh, you can let a player to, to uh, steal the ball from virtual Michael Jordan, for example. So, so the, the, yeah, really, the application is infinite. As a developer tool, uh, we, we, cre we created a two-part uh, framework to help developers to achieve this effect. The top diagram shows a cloud-based machine learning framework it will take a reference motion as input. It's around the, it also take a, a FBX file of your digital uh, character as input. Then we'll physicalize that model, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll train that motion brain, 
and output the trained result as a digital asset. The bottom layer shows the runtime plugin. Right? Currently, we support Unity and Unreal. You load our plugin, the plugin will, will interpret and execute the motion brain to provide that interactive characters we've shown in the former slides. So this just recap the, the few steps I mentioned. In order to use this pipeline, you upload your, your artistic model first, you add the physics to it second, then you choose the desired behaviors or upload your behaviors to the uh, cloud. Then you run the reinforced learning training framework to train it to become physics simulated interactive character. And you download the digital cerebrum, the digital brain, to your favorite uh, game engine, Unity, Unreal, or custom customized engine. And finally, you can simulate it in your VR, uh, AR content. So our goal is really to work with developers here to, to bring the technology to the next level, to apply it in creating highly interactive VR content that can do everything uh, real animals, real human can do. So uh, yeah, this concludes my presentation. And uh, the last, last two barcode are two quick demos. You can scan it on your phone. It should run on high-end uh, iPhone or Android phones. It just shows a very early prototype of interactive character. In both cases, you can interact with him. And uh, the performance is OK on mobile device. So uh, that concludes my presentation. And feel free to send the questions to, to my email. Or yeah, we can take qu questions now. Thank you.